हेलो व्यूअर्स आई एम ममता कॉन्टीन्यूइंग चैप्टर टू ऑफ क्लास ट्वेल्थ सेल्फ एंड पर्सनैलिटी टॉकिंग अबाउट द अप्रोचेस टू पर्सनैलिटी द सेकेंड मेजर अप्रोच इज अ साइको डायनामिक अप्रोच नाउ डायनामिक रेफर्स टू चेंजिंग फोर्सेस एंड साइको रेफर्स टू द माइंड सो वॉट आर द फोर्सेज विच इन्फ्लुएंस एंड अफेक्ट द माइंड द कॉन्शियसनेस एंड द पर्सनैलिटी दैट इज वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू डू टूडे this is a highly popular approach and owes its contribution to largely sigmund freud now sigmund freud is the father of psychology one of the fathers now he was a physician a general physician who tried to look at his patients and then with his practice he formulated the theory of personality now normally we have a theory which we use in practice whereas for freud it happened the other way round now freud used the concept of hypnosis initially he started with hypnosis for treatment of his patients when hypnosis faced a problem that when patients moved out of therapy the complaints reemerged so then he reimprovised his technique and gave it the name of free association it is a method in which a person is asked to openly share all his thoughts whatever comes to his mind the patient is going to share it because freud was sitting not facing the client not facing the patient the patient could not see freud or his facial expressions with the instruction that whatever thoughts whether meaningful significant irrelevant whatever thoughts are there without any censoring will be shared that is free association the second method that freud used was dream analysis now dreams according to freud are the royal road to unconscious he gave a term unconscious which is given here he talked about the levels of consciousness this is the first part of freud's personality theory levels of consciousness has three important parts to it it has the conscious it has the preconscious and it has the unconscious now unconscious was a part of personality of mind which freud gave the maximum importance to let's look at what they are conscious are the thoughts and the feelings which people are aware of what i am speaking right now i am aware of it what you are hearing you are aware of it preconscious is something which i can bring back to my memory what did i have last time for dinner that is something which i can bring back to memory how did i celebrate my 5th birthday i can bring it back to memory who was my class teacher in class 7th i can bring it back to memory it includes mental activities of which people may become aware of if they attend to it closely third and the most important component is the unconscious now this includes all the consciousness all the mental activity that people are not aware of they this aspect is basically hidden it is missing from the person's conscious memory and this influences the behavior of the person the most now what do you think will be the content of this unconscious it will have all the repressed all the suppressed all the traumatic all the painful and highly unpleasant experiences memories and emotions therefore mind chose to put them in an area which is not accessible for instance a girl at a very young age undergoes sexual abuse now this experience might have happened with a very close relative she hates that relative but she doesn't know why so the emotion is there but the memory goes in the unconscious so that you're not anxious about it. let's look at the second part of freud's theory it the second part is structure of personality now structure has three parts under it id ego and super ego id is basically the primary force with which the infant or the child is born with now this is governed primarily by the pleasure principle a child is asked do you want to have a toffee today or two chocolates tomorrow what do you think the child will reply he would definitely want a toffee today why would he wait till tomorrow that is the id for you this component wants immediate pleasure reduces pain immediate satisfaction of needs this is the basic structure when the child is born as the child grows up it 
diverges and splits into ego. Another part of personality develops, which is a very sensible part, a very logical and a very rational part. It functions on the reality principle. Suppose a child says, sitting in the classroom, I want to have an ice cream. Now, it will say, go ahead, have it. Ego will say, no, it is not the right time. Let the class get over, then you can go and have it. It will tell you, go and snatch a chocolate from your friend. Ego will say, no, wait. When it is the right time, reality, practically it is possible, then we'll have it. Third component is the superego. Now, this is a moral branch of mental functioning. Superego basically says, whatever my conscience is able to take. Everybody has a family set up. In the family, some values are internalized. Something that you learn from the parents, which you internalize, which you follow. Suppose my parents teach me that I should not steal. So when I go ahead and have a temptation to steal which some, an object which I like with my friend and I'm not able to purchase it, that is where superego comes in. So guilt, regret, conscience, morality, all this is a part of superego. There's a boy who doesn't want to cheat in the exam. Everybody around him cheats, but he doesn't have the courage. Why? Because his grandfather has instilled in him very strongly, cheating is a sin. So even if he sees others around him cheating, he will not be wanting and able to do it. That is a superego. Now, following this, we have an energy, we have a force, which Freud says are divided into two. One is called the life instinct, which is a survival instinct, a reproductive instinct through which life grows. The other is a death instinct, the aggressive, the suicidal and the life ending force. The life instinct Freud calls as the libido. Okay, moving on. Third concept given by Freud and a very important concept from the exam point of view. Now, this term is known as ego defense mechanism. Now, ego defense mechanism means that ego has to defend itself from the desires of the id and that creates anxiety. When id and ego are having a conflict, which one is going to be dominant, that results in anxiety because id wants to do it immediately, ego wants to wait. So that leads to conflict, that leads to anxiety in the psyche. That is where we tend to use defense mechanisms. These are the mechanisms for reducing the anxiety and these are the mechanisms which protect the ego from any kind of problem. So these processes are a defense against anxiety and they are very much unconscious. But the limitation with them is that if you use them for a limited period, they are very adaptive and very healthy. If you tend to use them for a longer duration, it becomes very unhealthy. So let's look at the kinds of defense mechanism. First one is repression. Now this basically means a lot of anxiety provoking thoughts or behaviors are totally dismissed by the unconscious. Like when we talked about the example of child sexual abuse, that was an example where all the information was put into a place not accessible. If a child is asked in a question in a counseling session, and the child's reply is, I don't know. Now here, the child is not able to say something that is bothering the child. That's resulting in a lot of anxiety. So the child does not want to acknowledge it. Second one is rationalization. Now, for example, a cricketer uses a particular bat because he feels that every time he uses it, he wins the match. You use a particular pen because you think this pen is lucky for you. Now, this basically means a person tries to make unreasonable feelings and behaviors seem reasonable by putting a socially acceptable reason or an excuse for it. Rationalization, the example you can see here is a young woman explains that she is having the entire chocolate cake, otherwise it will spoil in the summer heat. Third is projection, attributing one's own unacceptable desires and motives to other people. For instance, I say that my boss hates me. Now, in reality, I might be hating my boss, but because that doesn't seem acceptable, I put it on the other person. This can happen in any relation. 
So projection means like you see on a TV screen or you see on a cinema screen, the image is projected in the form of a movie. So whatever is there within is projected outside. Next is denial, a very simple one. You refuse to accept reality. Somebody dies very close to you, refuse to accept reality, still waits for the person to come back. Somebody having terminal illness, HIV AIDS, refuses to accept reality. Last is reaction formation, where a person defends anxiety by applying the exact opposite behavior to the feelings. So a stepmother over pampers the child, although unconsciously she doesn't really want to do it. A person with extremely high sexual urges channelizes his energies into becoming a priest or becoming a nun. That is reaction formation. Okay, coming to the last part of Freud's theory is the stages of personality development. Now, Freud has talked about these stages according to the age. So, you can look up the age, the body organ which is affected, the main features of it and the major conflict which has to be resolved. So, looking at the oral stage, which is the first one, the main organ, body organ for a child who is from 0 to 2 years is the mouth. So, you can look at the behaviors where the child is normally having food, biting, babbling. All these behaviors are the main features. And if there's a problem where the child is not able, infant is not able to move from this stage to the higher one, he will have a problem in the adult personality. He might get into smoking. He might get into the habit of saying negative all the time, thinking the world is a very hostile place. Okay, second stage is the anal stage, which is from 2 to 4 years. Of course, the basic area of pleasure is the anal area, because in this age, the children are learning toilet training from the parents. Suppose the parents are very strict with the bladder control, the child will become very particular about cleanliness, will keep on collecting and holding things which may or may not be required. In the other instance, the child will have fun and pleasure in troubling the parent during the process of bladder control. So, such people also have personality problems later. Third is the phallic stage, a very interesting stage. Four to six years, the focus here is on the genitals. So, Freud says that a child from four to six years develops and his sexual energy emerges. Now, in this stage, children become aware of the gender differences, whether the child is a boy or a girl becomes aware of it, of his sexuality. Now, here there are two complexes based on a Greek mythology, Oedipus complex for boys and Electra complex for girls. Oedipus complex basically starts from Oedipus, who was a Greek king who wanted to kill his father and marry his mother. Now, this is, seems very weird. But then this is a mythological symbol which Freud talked about emerged in the fantasies of people. Whereas Electra complex is opposite. Girls want to marry their fathers and want to replace the mothers. You might have seen young girls putting on the makeup, putting on the sari. Freud says unconsciously they are trying to replace the mother and marry the father. Now next happens when this particular complex is resolved by identifying with the same gender parent. We have the next stage which is latency, 7 years, puberty, where sexual energy is relatively sublime, child is involved in extracurricular activities. And the last stage is genital, which is puberty, which is adolescence. Here they try and adolescents try and relate to the opposite gender and therefore they try and understand themselves in a sexually mature manner. Last two concepts, fixation and regression. When you are stuck up at a particular stage, Normally what happens is you move back to the earlier stage. So getting stuck up, energy arrested is fixation. You move back to the earlier stage is regression. So for instance, a, a adult person starts throwing temper tantrums or starts crying. That's an example of regression. With that we wind up. We had covered psychodynamic the theory today, which talked about the five major aspects. We talked about the structure of the mind, the structure of the personality, the defense mechanisms, and the stages of personality development. Thank you. Thank you.